All right. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Um, we are going to go to, for those of you who are joining us earlier, we heard from the police chief of Collierville. Um, and here is some of what he had to say in a live news conference at the time. This was earlier today. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dale Lane. I'm the chief of police, Carryville. Uh, it breaks my heart to have to stand before you today uh, because we've had an incident here in Carryville that uh, has been occurring all over the country. Um, today at uh, 1.30, hours or 1 30 p.m. Uh, our dispatch received a call of an active shooter occurring at the Kroger behind us. Uh, at 1 34 the first car arrived on the scene immediately uh, our cars began to flood the area uh, to secure the scene. As we entered the building there were multiple people shot. The uh, Our SWAT team along with patrol officers and our command staff members began the process of going aisle to aisle, room to room, uh, clearing, bringing uh, employees out that were in hiding, and helping the victims that were that were injured. Um, at this time, we have still have a couple of active scenes that we are working. The suspected shooter's vehicle uh, is in the parking lot, and we are waiting on some additional equipment to get here to be able to. Uh, safely check that vehicle as well as some uh, property that's on him. Um, at this time, uh, the shooter uh, is deceased. Uh, we believe that's going to be from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We have 13 victims. Our hearts go out to those that were injured. Uh, we do have one fatality uh, and our thoughts and prayers are with those family members. Um, we had, uh, like I said, we had 13 victims that, that we know of at this time. Now, please bear with me and know that this situation uh, is probably going to change. And we'll do another update, another briefing, probably in three hours, somewhere in that range. And we'll update you. But we're having, we know that we've had uh, 12 victims that were transported from this scene. And we also know that we've had um, one, at least one additional walk up to uh, local hospitals. Um, today I have uh, Assistant Chief Jeff Ablin with me, our Fire Chief at Carryville, Chief Billings, his Assistant Chief King, uh, Assistant Special Agent in Charge Jeremy Baker with the FBI. We have Colonel Smith with MPD, Chief Inspector uh, Mills, Derek Mills with Shelby County. And I can't say enough about uh, the cooperation and the help. and. Uh, as bad as this scene is, and it's, hor it's horrific. I've been involved in this for 34 years and I've never seen anything like it. Um, but our teams came together and uh, worked together. That's not just the law enforcement agencies, but the fire. Uh, sometimes there's a delay. There was no delay with, uh, with our firemen coming into that scene with us. We just trained on this back two months ago at Carville High School. So it is, uh, just like I said, it's with a broken heart that I have to stand here before you today. Uh, so please keep the families in your prayers. Keep the folks from uh, uh, this Kroger. Uh, we have a representative from Kroger here as well. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to give a statement at this point, but uh, everything is preliminary. So with that, I'll open it up for just a couple of real quick questions. Oh, 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 one at a time. At this point in the investigation, there appears to be one shooter. And the deceased person, was that the shooter or was that the victim? Both. We have we have one one victim, and then one shooter. That's DOA at this point. And so just to clarify, 13 people shot, and of those, 12 injured and one dead. Correct. Right. Not counting. Shooters. At this point. Okay. Now remember, we're still receiving information that's coming in from other parts. Even uh, we've got some reports there may have been some walk-ups in Fayette County uh, with Fayette County Ambulance Service. So we're trying to confirm the, that information now. Um, but this, like I said, this was a joint effort. We had, Chief Billings can speak more to the number of ambulances and where they come from, but every city uh, around came and supported uh, the sheriff. Right now, that crime scene is huge, and it's being worked by the FBI's uh, evidence response team. Uh, TBI's got uh, agents en route. The Carryville Police Department Detective Division, or our Criminal um, Investigative Division is in there. Um, 
and the sheriff's office. So um, it's it's going to take a little bit to know exactly what happened. Chief, was the shooter an employee? Or do you know yet? That's part of the ongoing investigation. That's something that we don't need to talk SUV about. Black connected to the shooter? It's all still under investigation. Are there any children who are injured in the I do not have any information on that at this point. Um, not to my knowledge, but... Did you give a range of injuries from minor to severe? They're very serious. Very serious injuries. Chief, do you have any idea how many people were in the store at the time? I do not. Not at this point, but um, we know that we have quite a few witnesses. We're bringing in additional detectives um, for people that were in the store. Um, there were numerous employees that were working. I know we found people hiding in freezers and in locked offices, and, uh, you know, they were doing what they had been trained to do, run, hide, fight. And so, you know, I hate that we had to do it here. Did you ever see found inside the store or outside? That's part of the investigation. I don't, I don't want to get into that. Can you give us an idea? Of, can you give us an idea of what kind of weapon he was using? No. Uh, I'm not going to go into that at this point. Let's let's get through the investigation. Remember, we're two hours away from the most horrific event that's occurred in Carville history. That's part of this investigation. Chief, there's an image circulating on social media about a person who is suspected to be the suspect on the top of the building. Can you confirm or deny that? I cannot. I can tell you this. I was part of a team that, that extricated a, an employee of Kroger from the top of the building, so it's more than likely going to be uh, a Kroger employee that was working on the roof. Chief, what's it just the aftermath of this for this community, these employees you were just mentioning? What, how does this rank in Cardinal history right now? What you all dealing with? Right I mean, obviously, it's like every other community in the country. It's, it's horrific. We hate that it happened, but... Uh, this is one of the most resilient communities in, in America and uh, one of the best police departments. Uh, I'm very thankful. I, I watched guys that, uh, that, that, that ran into the front of that building um, knowing that uh, historically, not in this case, but it, historically many of these shooters are, have very high-powered rifles and not one of them hesitated going in that front door. Chief, we saw you. Did you meet with the employees over here? And are they, are they okay? How are they responding? I have I have met with some as we were bringing them out of the building. I have not uh, talked with all of them. So yes, ma'am. Okay. I tell you what we're going to do. We'll take one more question, and then we're going to we'll we'll uh, we're going to pause this for about three hours. So anybody else? One last question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, all the victims are there. No, they're they're spread out among all the area hospitals. Hey, because we're getting ready, what equipment are you waiting to need to go in this car? Uh, no, that's that's part of the investigation. So we're going to hold that right now. I don't. What we don't want to do is create unnecessary fear. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. All right. Uh, that was from earlier today. Uh, you saw the live. Uh, words there, the little bug at the top. Uh, that's the police chief of Collierville, Dell Lane. Uh, that was earlier today. Uh, they stopped to update uh, the news media so that we can make sure we get that information out to as many people as possible. This is a live look at the scene right now. Uh, we've switched now to a live look at the scene right now. Uh, we can see a little bit more of the front of Kroger in uh, the site of today's mass shooting uh, with 13 victims at the Kroger shooting uh, that happened around 1.35 today. Um, we know those 13 victims, two are dead, including the shooter. And we are staying on this uh, just to make sure that you are informed and that you can take information from us and give it to families uh, that have concerns about people in that area. Uh, we have been sharing with you throughout this afternoon uh, messages from elected officials. And I am told that we have a message from U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty. Uh, United States Senator Bill Haggerty of Tennessee. He says, tragic news out of Collierville, Tennessee, that I'm closely monitoring. I'm grateful to law enforcement and first responders for their heroic actions. Chrissy and I are praying for the victims 
and this Tennessee community that is hurting. My office is available to anyone needing assistance. That's U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty uh, of Tennessee. Um, at we will be we are right now uh, in contact with U.S. Senator Haggerty uh, to talk with him on the phone. Um, and as soon as he is available, we will make sure that we bring you that information. Um, we are back now uh, live on the scene. Uh, you can see where law enforcement, uh, they have a couple of, I've, I've noticed a couple of makeshift uh, temporary command stations that are there in the parking lot of Kroger as they continue to question witnesses, um, as they continue to talk to witnesses. And we are continuing to get information in from elected officials. Uh, Representative David Kustoff, um, you've seen on Fox 13. Uh, this is information that he sent out on a social post. Uh, this one was 50 minutes ago. My office and I are in touch with local authorities and law enforcement in Collierville and have offered resources as necessary. We are continuing to closely monitor the situation and are praying for everyone's continued safety. Again, that is from Representative David Custa. Um who is, of course, from Tennessee. And uh, we'll go back and forth to these messages, tweets and other posts on social sites for uh, our elected officials, both uh, at the national and the state level. And we have heard from uh, several, we have heard from several of the state representatives uh, as well today. So we've switched from the live scene and we are showing you some of the video that our photographers, our photojournalists, uh, gathered when they arrived on the scene. You can see the number of law enforcement first responders that are arriving and there you can see that they are preparing to transport a victim, uh, one of the victims. Uh, we have been told by Fox 13's Daryl Green, who is on the scene, he saw Four ambulances arrive and four ambulances leave. Uh, the Germantown Fire Department was called out today for the, uh, uh, and thanked for all of the work that they did today. Um, their first responders, uh, the chief of police said that uh, without the fire department, they would not have been able to respond in the way that they did today or or ever respond in such a manner without uh, a fire department there. Um, again, 13 victims in this mass shooting that happened today, shortly after 1.30. They're in Collierville, Tennessee. Uh, and that is, um, the police chief called it a horrific event. Uh, 34 years, the worst thing he's ever seen happen. Um, earlier, we heard from a, an employee of Kroger who talked with us 32 years she has worked with Kroger. And today, um, as we listened to her, you figured out this woman is tough and she is faithful and she ushered customers and co-workers out of harm's way, she thought. Let's listen in as she lays out for us what happened. Hey, we're here with Bridget Netta Dickerson. She's worked here for about 32 years. And she says she was working on the cash register when the shooting happened. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? All I know is when I heard uh, it happening, it first started in the deli. And I heard some gunshots. We thought it was balloons popping. So when it kept on going, we said, no, there's gunshots. So I ran. Some of my some of my coworkers and some of the customers came, and we ran, and I kept on saying go go go. So we ran to the back of the store by the meat department, and there's some double doors that take you to our break room. So we ran all the way back, and there's some more customers that was coming in, but they was coming in through the meat department, through that back part. And I told them, you all come on, let's hurry. And then all of a sudden, I went through the receiving department, and there's another door that takes you outside the receiving department. And there's a, another opening where you can go in and hide through a like an incinerator. And and here he comes right behind us, starts shooting. And he kept on shooting, shooting, shooting. He shot one of my coworkers in the head. 
and then shot one of my one of the customers in the stomach and then my other customer got kind of like cuts because of the uh, asphalt mm -hmm. and then that's all I that's all I can tell you but I did see a little glimpse of the guy and I saw he had like a little service gun a big one of the service rifles that's in the military and all I heard was just the gunshots and I'm like we're gonna be okay we're gonna be okay guy got us he's covering us so we're gonna be okay can you give us a description of what he looked like I can't really give you that much of a description. All I heard saw was black hair and his eyes. I don't. I, I can't tell you a lot because I don't want to point fingers at no one or say anybody else about it. That's all I know. It was a. It was a gentleman. It was a guy. And you said you took at least six people with you. I had five, including myself, and six. So it was three employees and three customers. What ended the shooting? The police came and all of a sudden they started shooting. I mean, they, uh, well, he actually went back into the store. And the cops just, you know, circled around, tried to check and see if anybody was okay. He came in where we were and said, we right here, we got four people, sh uh, four people shot, which is actually three people were shot because one just got cut in the eye with the asphalt. And they, ever, he asked, they asked us, are we okay? I said, I'm fine. And the lady that I was helping out, she was fine. Everybody was fine. Emotionally, how are you feeling at this moment? I'm a little bit still kind of a little shaky, but I'm okay. I got I got God on my side, and I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Ma'am, could you say and spell your name one more time? I apologize. Oh, that's fine. V, v is in Barbara. R-I-G. Uh, that is Miss Bridget Dickerson, a Kroger employee of 32 years. Um, she says she's a little shaken. You, I, I couldn't tell uh, by what we heard just now. Uh, that was done earlier today. Dominique Dillon was on the scene there with her gathering that interview. Um, amazing. Uh, she had the presence to lead her co-workers, and you notice she called them my customers, lead her co-workers and my customers out to safety. She took them through the meat department and she said she remembered there was an exit door going to the receiving department, which would take them outside, which she did. And she said the shooter followed them. Uh, she did say that she saw a co-worker shot in the head a customer shot in the stomach and then a third person injured but she said it was from the asphalt perhaps someone had fallen uh, but that there was a cut there uh, so six of them went out through the receiving department through that back door uh, three employees three customers including uh, Ms. Dickerson herself she will have been at Kroger for 33 years next week she told uh, Dominique uh, in that interview um, we right now, I am hearing that we have U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty on the line. Um, Senator Haggerty, uh, can you hear me? This is Merle Purvis in Memphis. Merle, I can hear you clearly. Th I can tell you, Merle, I am heartbroken with this. I know you are. You are in this area a lot. We just, we were just talking with you about another topic recently. Um, can you tell me what you have been told whether you have been asked so far for any kind of government assistance um, this is a mass shooting and it will rank up there as one of the worst yeah, this is terrible i've talked with police chief lane there on the ground i've talked with the town administrator james llewellyn as well they've both given me you know, a, a very current update of what's happening. I've been in contact, close contact, with Senator Marsha Blackburn, with Congressman David Kustoff. Um, we are still assessing the situation right now, but we're being clear, and I've been clear with everyone I've spoken with, that I'm there. I've got everyone's back there in, in the area, and we're going to do whatever we need to do, whatever we can do to be helpful as they get to the bottom of it. The FBI is on the scene. I've got to salute uh, our first responders, um, you know, the, the police on the scene almost immediately. Um, and I, I just uh, think it's such a tribute to um, the men and women in blue, what they do every day, and the fact that they risk their lives to protect us. Uh, but our first responders on the whole have been just, you know, p performing uh, at, at, at peak. I'm so, so appreciative of what they do. And I just have to say my thoughts and my prayers 
go out to everyone there in the community and to the families that have been affected. Um, uh, Senator, we just heard from uh, a Kroger employee of 32 years, almost 33 years, describing leading people out, trying to get them to safety. Of course, the shooter followed, uh, and a couple of them, uh, She, this employee said, her name is Ms. Dickerson, because I know you love reaching out to people, constituents. Uh, she said, uh, we thought she was very brave, that uh, the shooter had a service rifle that's like in the military. And of course, she's not an expert. She's talking about what she has seen. I'm not going to waste your time asking you about uh, whether or not gun control, uh, need, it, there needs to be tougher laws. You're not going to answer anyway, and this is probably not the time for that. But I do want to ask you about something. I know you stay in touch with what's happening in Tennessee. We have a permitless carry law. And many people think it is absolutely fine. Others believe it has led to what we have seen in our area particularly, a, an unbelievable rise in the gun deaths of young people. Would that have made any difference at all uh, in this situation today or any other situations like that? I think your instinct is right. Uh, the time right now is to be mourning and supporting those families that have been affected. Uh, again, I'm trying to make certain that any resources that are needed are available there right now. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, but even more important right now is to help the families cope with the loss that they're suffering, uh, to make certain that our law enforcement officers and our first responders are properly supported, which I'm doing. And um, I want to see uh, no community uh, should suffer from uh, a tragedy like this. Um, it's just, uh, again, as I said at the outset, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, and I know that um, we are not special, uh, to, uh, any more special than any other place. Uh, but having been here all these many years, more than 20 years for me, and you are uh, very familiar with this part of the world, um, did you ever think anything like this would happen around Collierville? Um, it's, it's unimaginable, Merle, for this to happen, as I said, in, in any town or community, uh, whether it's Collierville or, or any other place in our state or in America. Uh, this, this is not anything that, that those of us who are law-abiding citizens can imagine nor, nor would ever contemplate. Uh, but at the same time, I want to applaud our law enforcement because they're prepared to address it, and they stepped up immediately, and their training took, took, took effect. Uh, we need to take moments like this to appreciate and be thankful for those men and women that serve in a first responder role, particularly our law enforcement that risk their lives every day to keep us safe. Uh, they were there in an instant, and uh, it was shut down in an instant, and they talked about going from aisle to aisle, looking for victims and trying to find and secure the employees. Have you been told anything at all about uh, uh, the shooter, the shooter himself. Uh, is there anything you can share with us about that? I, I don't have any information on the shooter that would be pertinent at this point in time, but with respect to law enforcement, my understanding was that they were there literally within minutes. I understand four minutes to, to be on the scene, and that is, uh, I, I think, just exemplary performance. With respect to the shooter, uh, this is going to transition from, you know, a, a scene of devastation to a crime scene. And there'll be a, a very in-depth investigation. Again, I've, I've spoken with a local police chief. FBI are now on the scene. They will get to the bottom of this. Do you have any idea when you will be able to, and, and you might be in this area already, but I was of the understanding that you are in Washington. Um, if you are in Washington, you have any idea if you will be called back here anytime soon? Um, I'm, I'm here with Senator Blackburn in the Capitol right now, and uh, we're staying on top of the situation and monitoring as closely as we can. I have field staff that are there now, uh, my, my field office uh, in Memphis is on top of this, and we're going to stay as close to this as, as we possibly can and, and, again, make certain that any resources that we can or need to be provided are provided. Senator, do you have family in this area? Uh, certainly not in the Collierville area. I'm from Middleton. But I have family. I think anybody that's a parent, a husband uh, or a family member is 
You have been listening to Senator, U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty on the phone, um, giving us uh, information that we can make sure that we share with you. Uh, Senator Haggerty said he will be available um, to assist law enforcement, uh, to help out with the investigation, and to help families in any way that he can. I believe that we may have lost uh, his line. He said that he is in Washington at this time, uh, sent out his thoughts and prayers and condolences to the victims. And of course, uh, Senator Haggerty saw what the rest of us saw, and that is that law enforcement responded quickly, uh, instantly to the scene and shut down the active shooter situation. Uh, and we want to thank uh, U.S. Senator Bill Haggerty of Tennessee uh, for calling in, stopping his work today and calling in to give us an update and to also offer uh, condolences and assurances to families in this area, certainly in the Collierville area and in the greater Mid-South. Um, we are back live on the scene of uh, this horrific mass shooting uh, today that happened just after 1.30 uh, today. 1.34 is when the police chief says that the first car arrived. Uh, multiple people were shot, 13 injured, one victim and the shooters, two people dead. Nine people were transferred to Regional One Level One Trauma Center, four in critical, five non-critical, two are at Methodist, one taken to Baptist, and the good news on that uh, victim is that they were discharged about at least 30 minutes ago, but for sure they have been discharged from the Baptist Collierville. Um, Senator Haggerty said that, you know, this is this has gone from um, a scene of uh, tragedy now to a scene of an investigation and that law enforcement is working diligently to get to the bottom of all the facts that happened there. Um, he said this is a time when we should think about, you know, the families and, of course, the families of the victims. Uh, children that are in the Collierville school system who um, may or may not hear some very tragic news uh, when they return home tonight. Um, classmates tomorrow, and the, uh, once this has been investigated and more facts are coming out, uh, counselors will need to be called perhaps to the school system. Um, we have been live here uh, at Fox 13 bringing you up to date uh, with the information as it became available to us. And um, we will be going to Fox 13 News uh, at, are we, we're going to be going on a little, no, Fox 13 News at 5. We'll start in about a minute and 30, and, and 30 seconds. Uh, where we will continue our coverage of this mass shooting that happened today in Collierville, Tennessee, outside the Kroger store, the Kroger grocery store off Bahalia, um, just after 1.30 today. Fox 13 News at 5 starts now with breaking news. We continue covering breaking news as we come on the air tonight. A grocery store mass shooting at the Kroger on New Bahelia Road, where there are 13 reported victims. Um, you are looking at, just for a second there, that was the live scene uh, where it all happened. That was the Kroger grocery store. Uh, and we will be at Regional One Hospital, where victims were taken by way of helicopter. Uh, the Collierville police chief is calling this the most horrific event in Collierville history. Here is what we know so far. Thirteen people, a total of 13 people were injured. One of those victims is dead, and the shooter is also dead. Thank you for being with us. If you are just joining our live coverage, I'm Merle Purvis. Here is a better look at where exactly all of this happened. The Kroger store, it's located at 240 New Bahelia Road off Poplar in Collierville. Uh, there are a number of other businesses and restaurants in that area. It is a busy area. 
in this part of Shelby County. We have team coverage for you tonight. Fox 13's Daryl Green is live on the scene at Kroger with details about what police say happened. Fox 13's Dominique Dillon is also at Kroger. She spoke with witnesses about what they saw. She's got detailed information. And one of the witnesses says shots were first heard in the Delhi area. Jackie Massey is live at Regional One, where she will have an update on the victims who were transported, taken to hospitals. Let's get over to Daryl, who has details about what happened there. And Daryl, you were there shortly after uh, this started. Yeah, just, just moments after this started, Merle. Uh, I was actually leaving this area on my way to work. I saw several police officers pass me with lights on, uh, sirens wailing. It's called running code. So they were running code headed this way. So I decided to turn and follow. And that's exactly what I did. I only followed a block or two uh, to right here where we're standing. We're on the corner of uh, Bahalia Road, New Bahalia and Poplar. That's the Kroger store here in Collierville. Going to step out of the way and let you take a look as I describe what happened this afternoon from what I saw. Now, police tell us this happened uh, about 1.30 this afternoon. Within four minutes, Collierville police officers arrived after getting a call of shots fired inside this store. Um, police got here, EMTs followed quickly. I was here just a couple of moments after that. This was still a, an incredibly chaotic scene with people coming out of the store and police setting up a perimeter around the store when I first got here. And I saw people coming out of the back of the store because I parked in back of this store or to the east of this store, if you will, and made my way uh, here to the front. And as I was parking, I saw injured people being tended to by not only Collierville police officers, but also emergency medical personnel. Uh, one was clearly shot. She was, uh, she was bleeding. Uh, another one was also clearly injured. She was stumbling, being helped uh, there on the sidewalk. I made my way around this side of the store, heading north, got over to the pharmacy area, and there were people coming out of a side door from the pharmacy. Uh, those people were being helped by Collierville police officers, including Collierville Police Chief Dale Lane. He was with them. Now, as I came around the front here, I saw SWAT team members from both the Collierville uh, Police Department and Shelby County Sheriff's deputies who were dressed in SWAT gear making their way inside this store. Uh, one of them actually yelled. I heard him say, we don't know the situation. Get back. Get back. Not only talking to me, but to talking to uh, several other people who were uh, onlookers uh, who had just come out of the store trying to figure out exactly what's going on. That's when I ran into uh, one witness who was an employee, and she told me that she was nearby, close to the deli, when she heard a pop. She thought it was a balloon because very close to the deli is the flower department. You know the typical Klo Kroger uh, layout. She thought it was a balloon from there, but then she heard pop, 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 pop and the pops just kept coming. That's when she got frightened. She figured out very quickly that, that was gunfire. She said she could smell the gunpowder. So she got out of the way, came out one of the side exits. I talked to another person, a shopper who was inside this door. She described roughly the same thing, but she said she heard 10 to 15 shots. It's like they wouldn't stop. And she was able to get out through the back of the store. I just talked to one other woman who was inside the store shopping when this happened. And she was with a group of not only shoppers, but also employees who took cover first in one one of the aisles after there was a small break in the shooting they shot through the freezer department and they got out through the back so this was an incredible amount of chaos as you can imagine people running everywhere trying to get out of the way of this shooter now police officers as you heard chief dale lane explain got into the store very quickly they were helping people who were shot to get out at one point they located the shooter we don't know if it was inside the store or outside, but they located the shooter dead from what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. As they started to assess the situation, they found 13 people who'd been hit, 12 of those severely injured, one of those dead. So in total, we have 13 victims, one dead, 12 others shot and injured with varying degrees of injuries. Merle just told you just a moment ago before we started Fox 13 News at 5, one of those people has already been treated and released, thankfully. We don't have any updates or names on those victims as of yet. Plus, the shooter dead. They secured this scene very, very quickly. So we spent most of the afternoon talking to witnesses. Kroger employees were masked. You see this tree over to my right? Kroger employees were masked under that tree for quite some time. Just one big group, uh, really a sea of blue. They all had on blue aprons, uh, blue polos, 
and I'm not sure what was being discussed, but those employees were ushered across the street to a staging area. Uh, across the street is an academy sports store, and they were using that as a staging area for not only uh, police officers and law enforcement, but for also ambulances and fire trucks, uh, just in case they needed more uh, resources on site. I saw massive amounts of ambulances, a massive numbers of ambulances leaving this area at one time. At one point, there were four in mass just in a row, and they were coming and going, treating people and uh, getting people out of this area. Now, as I said, we've spent a lot of this afternoon talking to people who were inside that store, employees, shoppers alike. Fox 13's Dominique Dillon is here live with me. And Dominique, you take it from here. I know you talked to one woman. You did it live on our air about 45 minutes ago. Oh, I mean, a, comp a very compelling story she told you. Thank you, Daryl. Yes, she gave us a first-hand account of what happened. This woman's name, Bridget Dickerson. She says she's worked for Kroger for 32 years, and she tells us, much like Daryl said, she was working at the cash register, checking people out, and then she heard pop, pop, pop. She thought it was balloons popping, and then shortly after, she learned that it was gunfire. She quickly grabbed workers as well as customers and ushered them through the deli department to hide. She thought it would be safe hiding there, but she says the gunman followed her. And then this is when she gives an account of witnessing customers as well as employees get shot by this person. Hey, we're here with Bridget Netta Dickerson. She's worked here for about 32 years, and she says she was working on the cash register when the shooting happened. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? All I know is when I heard uh, it happening, it first started in the deli, and I heard some gunshots. We thought it was balloons popping. So when it kept on going, we said, no, there's gunshots. So I ran. Some of my some of my coworkers and some of the customers came, and we ran, and I kept on saying go go go. So we ran to the back of the store by the meat department, and there's some double doors that take you to our break room. So we ran all the way back, and there's some more customers that was coming in, but they was coming in through the meat department, through that back part. And I told them, you all come on, let's hurry. And then all of a sudden, I went through the receiving department, and there's another door that takes you outside the receiving department. And there's a, another opening where you can go in and hide through a like an incinerator, and and here he comes right behind us, starts shooting, and he kept on shooting, shooting, shooting. He shot one of my coworkers in the head, and then shot one of my one of the customers in the stomach, and then my other customer got kind of like cuts because of the uh, asphalt. Mm -hmm. And that's all I that's all I can tell you. But I did see a little glimpse of the guy, and I saw he had like a little service gun. A big, a... One shooter dead, 13 victims. One victim dead, 12 others injured. So, I mean, this is something that, uh, as I've said repeatedly since we hit the air about 2 o'clock, this is something that's uh, going to be ongoing for quite some time. The ATF is here. The FBI is here. I would imagine the TBI is soon to follow uh, all, of the all the jurisdictions that uh, border Collierville are here, Germantown, uh, Memphis police are here, Memphis fire, all helping in this investigation. And I, I pointed to the command truck over here, but you can see this command center under the, tape, under the tent right here. Um, I saw Chief Lane uh, in there again just a moment ago. Um, you know, this is going to have to be a very uh, delicately, delicately coordinated investigative effort because of the size of this area and the size of the crime scene. Because they're not going to just uh, comb the aisles of the store um, where the, the, the shots were fired. They're going to look all around this area to see if they can pick up any more clues. Uh, I believe Dominique pointed out just a moment ago that the shooter's uh, vehicle, suspected vehicle, is uh, here in this parking lot as well. There are employees and customers' vehicles who are still in this parking lot, and we're not sure when they're going to be able to get to them. They're all part of this investigation. This area is on lockdown. There's uh, still no traffic on Bahalia. Uh, after you hit Poplar, heading north on Bahalia, zero traffic. Bahalia is shut off. The only traffic allowed right now is uh, kind of parallel to this situation on, uh, on Poplar. So uh, traffic here, not going to happen for quite some time. No word yet on when they're going to lift these barricades and allow traffic uh, to continue. As a matter of fact, I know we sent Drone 13 up just a little while ago. And I believe we have that video that can kind of give you a perspective on the size of this crime scene, because this is a very big Kroger store. Uh, it stretches 
you know, half a city block at least. In fact, I talked to one employee who was in the pharmacy and had no idea what was going on, had no idea shots had been fired until people ran in and told them to get out. So it just sort of shows you uh, just how big this situation is. Merle, I know that uh, we've uh, also got crews down around the uh, the medical district trying to get an assessment on uh, some of the victims that have uh, been brought into that area. Do we have any update yet from Jackie Massey in the medical district? Well, uh, we are going to, uh, Jackie, as we continue our coverage of the mass shooting today in Collierville from the Kroger on by Hellier Road. Jackie, you have been giving us updates all afternoon. What do you have for us now? Merle, like I've been saying from the very beginning, nine patients, nine out of the 13 shooting victims are at Regional One four in critical condition, five in non-critical condition. And a spokesperson tells me they're prepared for mass shootings like this. They have special training for their staff so they can triage the patients then send them to the appropriate areas of the hospital. We also know that the other shooting victims, two of them were sent to Baptist Memphis and then two to Methodist University Hospital. One is in stable condition and the other one was rushed to surgery and one point that is good news is that one of the patients was discharged from Baptist Collierville and if you take a look behind me at Regional One you can see it's a lot quieter now the police cars are gone the fire trucks are gone but for these families with patients in the hospital obviously a very stressful time for them nine of them being at this hospital. We're pushing for more updates, and as soon as we learn more, I'll be giving you one. Reporting live, Jackie Massey, Fox 13 News. All right, thank you, Jackie. Uh, of course, the investigation on this mass shooting is ongoing, and uh, investigators are being very careful. They want to get it right. We're going to go back out to Daryl Green, live at the Kroger, uh, where this mass shooting happened. 13 people injured. Um, Daryl, give us an update about what's going on there now. We can see a lot more of the front of Kroger than we could uh, when we started this coverage a couple of hours ago. Yeah, Merle, I mean, this is, uh, it's still, as I said, uh, this is going to be an active scene for quite some time. We see officers coming and going. Uh, I believe this is, uh, this was actually one of the employees who's uh, being allowed to leave with their vehicle. Probably going to see a, a lot of that here straggling over the next few hours. Uh, employees had to leave their belongings. Shoppers had to leave their belongings just to get the heck out of Dodge and uh, get out of harm's way. So uh, from one law enforcement source who I spoke with who's been inside this store told me that uh, the place is littered uh, with evidence markers and uh, personal belongings. Shopping carts just left in place. Um, you know, things knocked off and strewn off aisles where people were trying to run, take cover, and get out of the way of this shooter. As a matter of fact, Merla, I know I've referenced uh, several times a couple of the witnesses that I spoke with. I spoke with one Kroger employee just minutes after she got out of the story and uh, or out of the store. And uh, as I spoke with her, Merle, she was visibly shaken. Let's let's take a listen to what she had to say. But yeah, I was right there by the, the seafood counter, and I heard a pop. It sounded like a balloon went off, and then uh, there was another one. And after that, uh, people, they went to move, and then all of a sudden, pop, 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 pop. And I turned my buggy around, and I started going to the back side of the store to get to one of them exits, because I wasn't trying to get to the front. And after they, after I got to exit, he was coming, you could hear whoever was doing the shooting coming down the front of the store. Pop, 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 pop. I don't know if he was shooting. So people. you heard you heard that many shots? Yes, it was I know I heard about fifteen or more in the store. And I went out the back door and we went out the back door and we got out there and the, and the manager was telling us to go on down toward VT Nails now. Did you did you see him? Did no, you see we never shoot? saw anybody. And uh and once we got on that side of the street it was another. They come outside. Pop, 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 pop. And then we, could, we ran this way. And uh, I don't know if he went back in the store or what. Then the police came and they uh, they said that they had him. And I know one guy got shot because he was around on the back with me. And I don't know if anybody else got hurt or not. 
Yeah, sadly, several people got hurt, uh, 13 in total. One of those people did. Now, I'll, I'll show you really quick. They, she ran out of the back of the store, and you can't see it, but behind this oak tree, about 200 yards in that direction, uh, that's the strip mall. That's the Vose Nails place that she was talking about that they ran to, uh, escorted by officers. Also, that was a woman who was inside the store shopping. Uh, I, I did get the chance to talk to one employee. This woman was, you know, a couple of yards away from where this happened uh, that you just heard from, but the employee the Kroger employee was very, very close by. Uh, she said this happened in the deli section. Let's listen to what she had to say just moments after this all happened. I was walking back towards the floor department and I heard a gunshot. It sounded like it was coming from the deli and I ran out the front door and they had already shot the front door and I'm on, on the parking lot now and several people did get shot. Some, some customers and employees too. I don't know how many. Do you know what the shooter looked like? I do not. The only thing I, the only thing I heard was a gunshot. Yeah, the only thing we know about this shooter, and this is according to Police Chief Dale Lane, who gave us that briefing about 10 minutes after 3, is it was a male. We don't have uh, any other information than that. It was a male. Uh, was he an employee here? He would not uh, tell us that. He said it was part of the investigation. Could this have been domestic? He wouldn't tell us that. Again, part of the investigation. So it's very easy to get into a situation of uh, conjecture here. That's something we are not going to do. But those are the questions that we are asking. And as I said at the top of the newscast, coming up at 10 minutes after 6, uh, about 50 minutes from now, uh, Collierville Police are going to hold another news conference right here to give us an update uh, three hours after the, uh, the last update to give us uh, the latest information on their investigation. As I said, for, according to one law enforcement source, the interior of this store is just is a shambles as people scattered to get out of the way. Parking lot was crammed full when I got here, and I got here about 135, 140, just as police were arriving. I had no idea what was going on until officers told me five minutes later it was an active shooter situation. And this parking lot, as is typical on any given day uh, after 1.30 in the afternoon, was crammed full. So that means the store was full of, uh, of shoppers, dozens of shoppers. So uh, again, just to recap, happened after 1.30, one gunman, dead, self-inflicted gunshot wound. Also 13 victims, one of those dead, 12 others taken to nearby hospitals with varying stages of injuries. Let's send it back to the studio here with Fox 13's Merle Purvis. Merle. Um, hey, thanks. You know, uh, Daryl, you were one of the first people uh, outside of that Kroger who knew anything about what was going on. Um, you followed the emergency vehicles, and it led you smack dab to the center of it. Yeah, it did. Um, I, I saw the emergency vehicles heading this way. Um, officers were already starting to block. And as a matter of fact, we can we can pan over to this direction. Forgive the uh, the other camera on the way there. But you see the Kroger sign. Officers were already blocking uh, this entrance. So I went around. I took Poplar uh, back to the east and circled around to the uh, the back side of the store. And that's where I saw even more officers. And uh, there were paramedics who were already on the scene. And this is just. You know, 10 minutes after the shots were fired, these the, the police presence here just minutes after this happened was pretty impressive. It, it was incredible to see the number of officers and eventually Shelby County Sheriff's deputies who were nearby, uh, SWAT team members who were geared up, ready to go, and charging into the building. I saw them going into the building, both the entrance and the exit and the pharmacy entrance. So, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, it's 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 something to to cover the news and 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 talk about it from a distance. But as I said about an hour and a half ago, for something like this to happen, you know, here in the Mid-South, in one of our hometowns, it's not something that uh, any of us really counted on doing on a Thursday afternoon, Merle. Yeah, and we were listening to uh, the very brave Kroger employee, Ms. Dickerson, Bridget Dickerson, uh, when, yeah. as we were talking about these, uh, the shooter information about the shooter and one of the things she said I thought was very interesting after she described that he had a service rifle that's like in the military and Dominique asked what did he look like and she said well all I could see was his black hair and his eyes but I don't want to start saying anything about people and it just spoke to not only her, her presence of mind, her courage leading her co-workers and customers out, but also her faith. She did not want to do 
anything uh, that in any way cast aspersions on another human being. Uh, she's a remarkable person from what we have seen today, Daryl. You know, we're going to hear more of those remarkable stories. We were uh, fortunate during an unfortunate time to happen across someone like her who would tell her uh, story as she did on our air. But as I talked to victims, you were hearing stories like that of them grabbing fellow employees, of grabbing shoppers and getting them uh, to safety, getting them in the back of the freezer closet. I talked to a friend of mine who I serve with on a charity board. Uh, she was inside this store when this happened and she was grabbed up by a Kroger employee and ushered through the back of the store. So we're going to hear a lot of those stories. There is a, a story of another employee who uh, risked themselves to run all the way across this store, the length of the store to the pharmacy to make sure that the pharmacists who were in that one little corner and locked in that corner knew what was going on and they could get out as well. So we're going to hear a lot of those stories, Merle, as this all unfolds. Yeah. Uh, let's go over to Dominique Dillon, who uh, you saw her earlier. She was able to talk with that Kroger employee of 32 years, Ms. Dickerson. Uh, Dominique, are you there? Can you hear me? And you mentioned that you were able to talk with another employee. Uh, give us some ideas about what employees are telling you. Well, Merle, when I got on the scene around 2.20, I was able to talk to several employees. If you take a look over to my right, you can see that this is the parking lot we first came to. So once I got here around 2.20, my photographer and I came to this parking lot on the side of the Kroger, and there were dozens of employees standing out here. They didn't know what to do, where to go. They were visibly shaken up, crying. Um, it was a heartbreaking situation. Many employees' families were meeting them here. I heard one manager say he felt so sorry for one of his employees because it was his first day on the job and this is what he had to experience but as you can imagine everyone was shaken up I spoke with one woman she said she had just came back from her lunch break she was so grateful she wasn't here but her husband met her her here on the scene we're told he knew about it before she even knew about it she he quickly rushed out here to Collierville to be with her. She was shaken up. She was just hoping that her co-workers were okay. But as you know, 13 people were shot. One individual died and then the shooter died as well. But as you can see, there's a pretty heavy police presence out here. I also saw some FBI agents. And if you look next to the Kroger where the stop sign is, that black SUV, I'm told that is the car the shooter was in. And currently, it looks like there's a robot, some type of robot circling around the vehicle. The right back door is open. Both back doors are open. So they're clearly investigating this car, trying to check it out before they get any closer to it. That may be something that uh, the police chief had mentioned earlier today during that news conference, which we have another one in about an hour or so. So maybe he'll be able to give us more details about exactly what that robot is there and what it is detecting, what it's looking for. That's unclear at the moment. But as you can see, this entire scene has been roped off as investigators try and understand exactly what happened here at this Kroger, gather all of the information they can. And then I feel like I see an investigator walking a dog as well, but I can't see through the cars. But I'll take you back to some of the, um, you know, the firsthand account of some of the workers. I spoke with one worker. She was too upset to speak with us on okay. camera, but off camera, she walked, she walked us through exactly what happened she says that she was in the office with an, an, another employee and he was showing her something on the computer. It's unclear if he was her coworker or if he was her manager, but he was showing her something on the computer around 1.30 in the afternoon when they heard the gunfire. That employee quickly ran to the door, tried to shut it, but she says two um, customers barged in looking for safety, frantically trying to Dominique. hide from the gunman. We're told the Dominique. Gun yes. Um, as you uh, hold your hold yes. your thought right there, would you ask the photographer if if the photographer can zoom in on a steady shot of what's going on behind you? That robot appears to now be at the back door of that vehicle. And would you repeat? I want you to zoom in to the robot. I'm into the robot. Fire back and go. Okay. okay. 
Okay, and Dominique, now this car, you said investigators have been surrounding it for a while now? Yes, for several hours. And we're told that this is the vehicle of the gunman. And the chief said in his live news conference earlier that they are now looking into the car and checking it first to make sure it's safe to approach it. Um, is that what we are seeing, witnessing now possibly with the robot? Yes, that's what it looks like we're witnessing right now. As you can see, the robot is circling around this vehicle, trying to inspect it, trying to make sure that it's safe to enter and investigate. Um, as you mentioned, the police chief said that they're waiting for some type of equipment before they could enter the SUV. And it seems like this is the equipment they're waiting for to arrive on the scene. They would not go further into the equipment, what it was used for, because they said they didn't want to cause a panic. However, as you can see, there is this robot here circling the vehicle and just trying to detect whatever it is they're looking for. The FBI is out here on the scene, several law enforcement, Collierville police, they're out here as well. And um, shortly, I guess we will see whether or not, you know, investigators go into this vehicle if they determine that it's safe to enter or not based on what this robot finds. Uh, can you see the the model, what kind of SUV that is from where you are? I can't see. It looks like a Ford. What does it look like to you, uh, Rob? Uh, Our viewers are, we are looking at your photographer's live picture of the robot's arm. Does it look or like a Ford to you too? What kind of vehicle does that look like to you? Going uh, into that back window like of the SUV. Ford. I think. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, okay. We just, we just heard, uh, from Joey that it is a Toyota RAV4, dark colored Toyota RAV4, uh, that is being inspected. And Dominique found out that that is, uh, the vehicle of the shooter, um, that we are looking at in this close up zoom shot, uh, with surrounded by law enforcement vehicles as well as law enforcement officers. Okay. And this is a live scene uh, at the Kroger in Collierville where a mass shooting happened today, earlier today, just after 1.30. If you are just joining us, our coverage continues on Fox 13 News at 5.30. Uh, we are following breaking news right now on the scene of a mass shooting in Collierville, Tennessee, uh, the Kroger grocery store on Bahalia. We have several crews that will be live for us tonight, bringing you up to date on what happened. You can see there uh, at the bottom of the screen, 13 victims in that Kroger shooting. Two people are dead, including the shooter. Two people dead, including the shooter. You will hear from a Kroger employee during this newscast uh, who helped to lead people to safety. Uh, and the shooter followed that Kroger employee and the others. You're also going to hear from Fox 13's Daryl Green, who arrived shortly after uh, the emergency vehicles when the shooting had started. Um, uh, you will also get to hear from uh, an eyewitness that Dominique Dillon and Daryl Green spoke with eyewitnesses on the scene talking about what they heard when the gunshots rang out, uh, when the shots were fired. The police chief for Collierville, Del Lane, said this is the most horrific event in Collierville history. I'm getting text messages from people in Collierville, one that said, I have lived here I have lived here since this place was two lanes. I have never been so sad and so heartbroken. Uh, that and This uh, text said they moved there in 1973. 
people all over the country uh, have turned an eye to Collierville, Tennessee, uh, trying to find out more information about this mass shooting. Collierville schools earlier today were on temporary lockdown. Um, the shelter was lifted. Collierville schools has been trying to reach out to parents and doing an, uh, to our mind, uh, uh, a very credible job reaching out to parents of their students, letting them know the students are on lockdown, they are safe, letting them know when the shelter in place had ended, uh, and also telling them about down to bus pickups, of course. Um, all of that has happened today in the span of just a few hours. A tragic day in Shelby County. Uh, to be sure, 13 people, victims of a mass shooting at a Kroger grocery store, two people dead, including the shooting. We have been hearing from people around the country today, both elected officials and those who are uh, citizens who have family in the Collierville area and the Shelby County area. This is from <clears throat> Mayor Jim Strickland, the mayor of Memphis, whose police department and fire department are on the scene as we speak, helping with the investigation. Mayor Strickland says, our hearts go out to our neighbors in Collierville who are facing the pain of this tragic event in their community. I want to thank our police and the departments who answered the call to assist. We pray for the victims and for their families. Again, that's from the mayor of Memphis, Mayor Jim Strickland, uh, and others have been sending out condolences uh, and well wishes to the families and thanking law enforcement for their speedy response, as well as first responders getting there um, uh, to take care of the injured. Uh, we are is we have been live from the. Regional One, the medical district today, Jackie Massey has been bringing us up to speed on where the victims have been carried, and she also found out about the condition of uh, many of those uh, victims. Uh, is Jackie there now? Jackie is gathering information for us. She has been there all afternoon uh, gathering information about what happened. Here's some of what she found out earlier. Um, Jackie was able to find out that there were nine victims taken to Regional One this afternoon, uh, four in critical, five in non-critical. Two of the victims were taken to Methodist University, which is also in the medical district, and then one, and this is good news, the one that was taken to Baptist Collierville uh, was discharged. Uh, we have a statement now from Kroger um, about what happened today. The statement reads in part, we are deeply saddened by the incident that occurred at our Kroger store located on New Bahalia Road in Collierville, a suburb of Memphis. The entire Kroger family offers our thoughts, prayers, and support to the individuals and families of the victims during this difficult time. We are cooperating with law enforcement who have secured the store and parking lot. The store will remain closed while the police investigation continues, and we have initiated counseling services for our associates. To protect the integrity of this ongoing investigation, we are referring questions to the Collierville Police Department. And of uh, that's part of the statement. That is from Kroger about the mass shooting that occurred at their store in Collierville uh, today. We're going to go back out live to the scene with Fox 13's Daryl Green. Uh, who has been on the scene uh, since just after the first uh, emergency vehicle arrived there. Darrell? Yeah, Merle, I, I followed some of the first emergency vehicles uh, uh, right into this area and, uh, and, and, and found this situation here at the Kroger on New Bahalia, right at New Bahalia and Poplar in uh, the middle of Collierville. Uh, you've, you've reset the, the, the scene for us. Now let's tell you what we've learned. We, we've learned that there, and you really you can't see it from here. I'm just giving you a sense of direction. If you go straight through the Collierville police sign, and up on the curb next to the store, about 150 yards from my location, um, that's where that vehicle is that they're taking a look at. Again, it's a black SUV. I believe I heard uh, one of our crews say that it was a, a Toyota RAV4, if I'm not mistaken. Forgive me if that's wrong. But uh, there's a black vehicle that bomb squads are taking a look at with the robot as we speak. As a matter of fact, do we still have that live picture over there, guys? If we do, let's go to it. Yeah, there we go. So I was uh, I was able to walk around the perimeter here, and it's quite a haul. 
and very close to that truck that you see is uh, the, the police bomb squad. I could not tell from what jurisdiction. Uh, they were in all black and all green. You might have seen some of the, uh, the movies and TV shows where bomb technicians uh, put on these massive, thick, padded suits. There was one individual who had one of those suits on or was getting into that suit uh, as I was over there before I was asked to, to leave that area and back off the police tape. But uh, you can see the robot is there. Um, and it's it's getting ready to, to, to probe that car. They're trying to figure out if this individual uh, might have booby-trapped the car, might have uh, put explosives in the car. They're looking that uh, that direction, and of course they'll uh, eventually look at that car if it remains intact as evidence. And it looks to me, and this is just my personal observation, it looks to me like uh, the shooter drove up on the curb of the store, uh, right in front of the front door, and exited the car, went inside the store, and. And, and, and did what he did. So it's not like he took a parking place and acted as if he was a customer. Uh, he, uh, from what we can tell from witnesses and from what I see over there, the location of the suspect's vehicle, he went in there with uh, some pretty criminal intent from the get-go. So again, 13 shot, one dead. The shooter, also dead, we're told, from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I want to reiterate that uh, Carrieville police are going to be giving us an update from, uh, well, 31 minutes from now, at 10 minutes after 6 o'clock. That's when they're going to step back over here to this media area where they've staged the media and give us an idea of how far they've been able to come in the last three hours since their last update and their investigation. Uh, you can see that uh, officers and investigators are, are starting to sort of tighten the perimeter, if you will. Uh, that, that's Daryl talk for we don't see as many officers out here as we did. We see more officers towards the store uh, looking in the parking lot closer to the store. And there are several officers and investigators from my vantage point just a moment ago who were inside the store still sort of going through uh, uh, what they see in there. Now, it was described to me uh, by one uh, law enforcement agent who was in there just a short time ago as just a scene of chaos. He said that uh, people had, had left their shopping carts where they were. There were personal belongings scattered everywhere. Uh, employees have a personal belongings uh, who are still in their lockers they can't get to. It's like a, a snapshot of time that was frozen. Those people just getting out of there as quickly as possible so they could get to safety. People ran through all the exits. You heard uh, just near the uh, top of the newscast from one of the employees that I spoke with who told me she immediately ran out of the front door after she heard the gunshot. She was very close to the front door. She didn't wait for anyone. We talked to other employees who have well, spent time going through the store, making sure employees and shoppers were able to get uh, to safety. As a matter of fact, uh, let's let's go ahead and play uh, a couple of the interviews that, that I did uh, just moments after I got here on this scene. One was a shopper who described what she saw near the freezer section, another an employee. By the way, that employee told me she just got back on the job this week. She'd been out with a heart condition. So God bless this woman and that she was able to, to come out of this without more trauma. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. But yeah, I was right there by the, the seafood counter and I heard a pop. It sounded like a balloon went off. And then uh, there was another one. And after that, uh, people, they went to move and then all of a sudden, pop, 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 pop. And I turned my buggy around and I started going to the back side of the store to get to one of them exits because I wasn't trying to get to the front. And after they, after I got to an exit, he was coming, you could hear whoever was doing the shooting coming down the front of the store. Pop, 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 pop. I don't know if he was shooting. So you heard, you heard that many shots? Yes, it was, I know I heard about 15 or more in the store and I went out the back door and we went out the back door and we got out there, and the, and the manager was telling us to go on down toward VT Nails. Now, did you, did you see him? Did you no, see we never shooter? saw anybody. And uh, and once we got on that side of the street, it was another. They come outside, pop, 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 pop. And then we could, we ran this way, and uh, I don't know if he went back in the store or what. Then the police came, and they uh they said that they had him. And I know one guy got shot because he was around on the back with me. And I don't know if anybody else got hurt or not. Yes, several people got hurt, several beyond what she was able to see. 
A total of 13 were shot by this individual. One of those dead, we've confirmed that. We don't know uh, the conditions of the other people who were hit, but we do know they were taken to different hospitals all around this area. Uh, as Merle has pointed out throughout our live coverage that started about 2 o'clock, uh, Bab Collierville Baptist uh, Hospital is only about a mile and a half uh, to my west, uh, literally just down Poplar Avenue, but it's not a level one trauma center as Meade Regional One is. Um, we have video, I don't know if we have it in, in our in-house yet or not, but I was able to shoot video of uh, Medwing overhead. One helicopter hovered for quite some time, eventually landed. I thought I saw a second Medwing, but I've, I'm not sure if that was a second helicopter or maybe it was the first uh, who briefly touched down and, and came back up. I don't know if anyone was taken in that Medwing, but those helicopters are capable of transporting two patients at a time. And from what Chief Dale Lane described to us, some of these gunshot wounds uh, were so critical that it's it's very likely that uh, at least two, maybe more of those individuals were taken uh, by Medwing to Regional One and uh, other uh, hospitals around this area. People were transported by ambulance. They've uh, completely blocked off New Bahalia from Poplar um, all the way up. I'm, I'm assuming all the way up to Market Boulevard, which is just a couple of blocks to the north of this location. Uh, completely blocked to traffic. The shopping center across the street is uh, cordoned off. You can't come out onto New Bahalia, but you can exit uh, onto Poplar, clearly. They were using, as a matter of fact, Kevin, I know we got a lot of people here, but just right over here, you can see that parking lot in the distance. That's uh, an Academy Sports behind there, a couple of other smaller shops, and a Target just in the north of that. That entire parking lot was loaded uh, for a couple of hours with law enforcement uh, vehicles, with fire trucks, with several ambulances. They were using that as a staging ground for quite some time. But just in the past 45 minutes to an hour, I've seen traffic start to flow back into those areas. Uh, people able to get into Target and Academy and uh, those areas again to, to, to at least try to get back on with some uh, sort of a, a normal life here. Uh, there was also, you may have seen this on social media, I know we alluded to it, about someone on the roof of this store shortly after the shots were fired. Uh, we asked Chief Dale Lane about that, and we were told that that was more than likely a Kroger employee who had either sought refuge by going onto the roof or may have been on the roof working at the time. I asked Chief Lane if there were, in fact, two shooters, because that was the, the supposition, if you will, that one was inside, there was another on the roof, but he said that that was not a shooter, likely an employee, and he was part of the group of, of officers who helped employees get not only down from the roof, but also through the back door to escape all of the chaos. So uh, th there was not a second shooter. One shooter, that shooter's dead. Thirteen people hit, one victim dead, 12 others injured, as I've said, with veering stages of injuries. Merle? All right. Thank you so much, Daryl, for that update. Uh, Daryl is live on the scene there. Um, we want to let you know that the Collierville Methodist Church, located at 454 West Poplar Avenue, will be open for prayer tonight. It will open at 630 and will remain open until 8 p.m. Uh, so for anyone who would like to go by there, uh, if that is your church or not, if you are near there, uh, it will be open. That's the Collierville Methodist Church located at 454 West Poplar. They will be open for prayer starting at 630 and will remain open until 8 p.m. We're going to go back out into the field with one of our live crews. Fox 13's Tom Dees is there on the scene. And Tom, I understand that you have been watching and observing what is happening near where the shooter's car was found. Well, uh, exactly right behind me is uh, what we're told is the suspect's vehicle. You can see it up there uh, right, kind of sitting next to that stop sign at the entrance to the Kroger with the doors open. We did see them. Uh, they had a robot that was out here earlier uh, going around it. We've also uh, seen uh, a heavy police presence out here. When I first got out here on the scene, uh, one of the guys with the PD came up to me and told me that I needed to back up to the sidewalk, uh, that the bomb squad was trying to make sure that everybody was a far enough distance away. One of the things um, that I have noticed was that people are just on the other side where, where I pulled up to the front of the Kroger, a lot of folks just standing around stunned, trying to figure out exactly what happened. I also had a chance to go around to the back of the store, heavy police presence around the back of the store as, as well. Looked like they had some crime scene 
markers there as well. The bomb squad just pulled out a few minutes ago. They did have the robot um, up around the car checking it. But again, uh, heavy police presence still out here. A lot of people walking around, looking, uh, taking in the scene and trying to just figure out exactly what happened. Looks like we got a guy in the bot from with a uh, bomb squad suit on right now. You can see he's going up to the car, uh, looking inside. They're still inspecting it. Uh, once again, we're told that's possibly the suspect's car, but we do see a member of the bomb squad in one of those protective suits uh, going around the car right now and, and looking at it. He's on the right-hand side of the vehicle. Looks like he's going, uh, looking in the driver's side of the vehicle. He's around back of it just a few minutes ago, but again, um, they were telling us earlier, and now he's checking uh, in the back door, it looks like. Don't know if he's going there taking photographs or what, but he's, he's uh, thoroughly examining the car but again when we got here on scene earlier they were telling us that we needed to be back all the way to the uh, the sidewalk to keep our distance um, for the bomb squad was checking out the car reporting in Collierville I'm Tom Dees for Fox 13 News hey Tom it's Merle can you hear me I can hear you okay listen um, t tell us again it doesn't look to me that that car the suspect, the shooter's car, uh, we believe, is in front of the Kroger store. How many doors or businesses away is it? Or is it in front of, near the Kroger's front door? No, it's it's right near the, the Kroger front door. Merle, it's actually at a stop sign um, that's right there at the corner of the Kroger. He's sitting, that car is sitting right there on the corner at uh, one of the front entrances uh, to the Kroger that, that we can tell. Again, uh, they've got all four doors on the car open and uh, that bomb squad member in that protective suit going in and looking into the vehicle. Looks like it's, it's parked just right there on the corner of the building. Merle? All right, so are, so are you at the east end of that Kroger store? That's exactly, well, I'm at the east end. If you know where the Captain D's is and where the Advanced Auto Parts is, I'm kind of in between uh, those two areas of the uh, the parking lot is where is where I am. But yeah, I'm on the uh, e on the east side of the building. All right. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, hang around there and continue gathering information for us. Um, <clears throat> we know that Jackie Massey has been busy uh, following the story, gathering information concerning the hospitalization of victims. And Jackie, I understand that you. It most recently talked with family members of one of the victims? Yes, I just talked to someone on the phone, obviously a very tough conversation. They didn't want to talk too much today, but I talked to a man who says his mother was shot and killed at the Kroger. I'm not releasing names because of privacy, but he plans on talking with me tomorrow when his brothers come into town. Obviously, very fresh very sad time for that family and we're going to talk about the hospitalizations now we know that at least nine patients were sent over here at regional one four in critical five in non-critical if you take a look behind me you can see it's not as active over here now but earlier there are several police cars fire trucks and it appeared that maybe family or friends were outside but we're not exactly sure we do know that two other patients were sent to baptist memphis and then two at Methodist University Hospital. One was rushed to get surgery, and then another one is in stable condition, while one was recently released from Baptist Carville, and that's good news, but obviously still a lot of patients who are not doing well. I was also told by a regional one spokesperson that they are always ready for events like this. They have specialized training, so the staff can triage the patients and determine who goes where. But again, back to talking to that family member, obviously didn't want to push him, a very hard time for him, but I plan on talking with him tomorrow and sharing his mother's story. Again, his mother was shot and killed at the Kroger. Reporting live downtown, Jackie Massey, Fox 13 News. Oh my goodness, uh, thank you, Jackie. My God, what a terrible day uh, in our area. Um, we want to uh, just remind you again that the Collierville Methodist Church, uh, located on West Poplar at 454 West Poplar Avenue, is going to be open tonight for prayer. Will open at 6:30, and will it, they will keep 
the facility open until 8 o'clock tonight. Again, that's the Collierville, and it's the United Methodist Church there, Collierville United Methodist Church, um, uh, 454 West Poplar, will be open for people to come um, to the sanctuary for prayer uh, following today's mass shooting uh, not far away from there at the Kroger in Collierville. Uh, <clears throat> we want to just update you again on this mass shooting. Uh, just moments ago, you saw a live scene of the shooter's vehicle. We believe what is the shooter's vehicle uh, being searched. Once it was uh, called deemed safe for them, there is a live scene where the RAV4, dark colored RAV4 SUV is parked there. That is on the east side of the Kroger on West Bahalia. Uh, Tom Dees was live there uh, giving us some information about the progress of that part of the investigation. Um, 13 victims in the Kroger shooting, two dead tonight, including the shooter. Uh, we know that Kroger employees were found in office spaces, according to the police chief, Del Lane. They were found in the freezer area. We heard from one Kroger employee, uh, Ms. Dickerson, who said that she's been with Kroger for 32 years, and today when she heard the gunshots that started in the Delhi area, she ran towards the meat department uh, and ushered people along with her to the back of the store, heading for the receiving department because she knew there was a door and a way out, outside. And they got outside, she got five people, two, three customers, two other employees, and the shooter she told us, had followed them outside. We're going to go to Fox 13's Dominique Dillon now, uh, live on the scene. Uh, Dominique, you were the one who talked with uh, Ms. Dickerson, Bridget Dickerson, I, whom I call one of the bravest people I have heard from in a long time. And you also spoke with other eyewitnesses, other Kroger employees. That's right, Mara, when my photographer and I first got here around 2.20, the scene was hectic. We came to this parking lot right here on the side of the Kroger, which as you can see now is where the SUV was parked right there at the stop sign. But everyone was gathering in this side parking lot at first, frantic. They couldn't believe what had just happened. A lot of their family members were also meeting them here to make sure that their loved ones were okay. One man says that he rushed out here and knew about the shooting before his wife even knew about the shooting because she was off on her lunch break. But he was just so happy to embrace her, to see her. Everyone was emotional, crying, making sure that one another was okay. There was also a manager out here. He said that he felt so bad for one employee. It was his first day on the job and to have to go through a mass shooting, horrific. Uh, I also spoke with uh, people, employees who were out here about three hours after the initial shooting. And many employees, as you can see, this parking lot is filled with cars. There's people showing up on the scene and they're still trying to get their items. Their cars have been left here, uh, their purses, their keys. They had to have people come and pick them up. I spoke with one woman who was waiting for a ride to pick her up. She says that she was in the office with another employee looking at something on the computer. And that's what the employee was showing her, something on the computer when they heard the gunfire. That employee quickly jumped up, tried to shut the door, but the but two customers barged in looking for safety. And she says the gunman followed those two customers into that office, shot her, uh, either her manager or just another coworker in the face twice. That's what she tells us. Last check, she says that that person was in critical condition. But um, as you mentioned, we also spoke with Miss Bridget as well. She gave us um, an inside look into what happened while she was inside the store as well. She says she was checking customers out when she heard what sounded like balloons popping, pop, pop, pop. She quickly realized it was gunfire and that's when she took them through the deli for safety. But unfortunately, the gunman followed her and about five others back there. Take a listen to her firsthand account and seeing, looking this gunman in the eyes. 
Hey, we're here with Bridgetta Dickerson. She's worked here for about 32 years, and she says she was working on the cash register when the shooting happened. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? All I know is when I heard uh, it happened, it first started in the deli, and I heard some gunshots. We saw it was balloons popping. So when it kept on going, we said, "No, there's gunshots." So I ran. Some of my some of my coworkers and some of the customers came, and we ran, and I kept on saying, "Go, go, go!" So we ran to the back of the store by the meat department, and there's some double doors that will take you to our break room. So we ran all the way back, and there's some more customers that was coming in, but they was coming in through the meat department, through that back part. And I told them, "You all come on, let's hurry." And then all of a sudden, I went through the receiving department, and there's another door that takes you outside the receiving department. And there's a, another opening where you can go in and hide through a like an incinerator, and and here he comes right behind us, starts shooting, and he kept on shooting, shooting, shooting. He shot one of my coworkers in the head, and then shot one of my one of the customers in the stomach, and then my other customer got kind of like cuts because of the uh, asphalt. Mm -hmm. And that's all I that's all I can tell you. But I did see a little glimpse of the guy, and I saw he had like a little service gun, a big, one of the service rifles that's in the military. And all I heard was just the gunshots, and I'm like, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. God got us. He's covering us. So we're gonna be okay. Can you give us a description of what he looked like? I can't really give you that much of a description. All I heard saw was black hair and his eyes. I don't. I, I can't tell you a lot. Because I don't want to point fingers at no one or say anybody else about it. That's all I know. It was a, it was a gentleman. It was a guy. And you said you took at least six people with you? I had five, including myself, and six. So it was three employees and three customers. What ended the shooting? The police came, and all of a sudden they started shooting. I mean, they. Uh, well, he actually went back into the store. And the cops just, you know, circled around, tried to check and see if anybody was okay. He came in where we were and said, we right here, we got four people sh uh, four people shot, which is actually three people were shot because one just got cut in the eye with the asphalt. And they ever, he asked, they asked us, are we okay? I said, I'm fine. And the lady that I was helping out, she was fine. Everybody was fine. Emotionally, how are you feeling at this moment? I'm a little bit still kind of a little shaky, but I'm okay. I got, I got God on my side, and I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And there's a lot of cars still out here in this parking lot. A lot of employees had to leave their belongings behind. Uh, there's a few people that have shown up asking when they can get their car to take home. And one employee told me that an investigator told her she may not be able to get her things until tomorrow. So there's no need to really rush down here to get your items because this is an active crime scene and you're not going to get past uh, this perimeter. Reporting live in Collierville, Dominique Dillon, Fox 13 News. All right. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, we will be right back with Fox 13 News at 6 o'clock. Fox 13 News at 6 starts now with breaking news. We continue following breaking news out of Collierville, Tennessee. Sad news as we come on the air. A grocery store mass shooting at the Kroger, located on New Bahelia Road. There are 13 reported victims. We're going to take you to live to the scene, a live look at where it happened, as well as to Regional One Hospital, where victims were taken today by way of helicopter. Collierville Police Chief is calling this the most horrific event in Collierville history. And here is what we know. 13 people were injured. One of the victims died. We heard earlier that we have talked to the son of that victim. We'll have more on that later. And we know that the shooter is also dead. Thank you for being with us for Fox 13 News at 6. I'm Merle Purvis. Uh, here is a better look at where exactly it all happened. The Kroger at 240 North 
by Halia Road off Poplar Avenue in Collierville. And there is a busy scene there with lots of businesses and restaurants in the area. Our team coverage starts tonight with Fox 13's Daryl Green live on the scene at the Kroger with details about starting with having been there today just after the first emergency vehicles arrived. Darryl. Yeah, Merle, on my way to work this morning, or uh, this morning, this afternoon, just after uh, 1.30, uh, I followed emergency vehicles because there were so many of them. And you don't usually see a, a train of police cars followed by EMTs uh, in Collierville flying up New Bahalia. So I, I got here. Um, I was told immediately that there was an active shooter situation. I parked in the back of the building um, on the opposite side of this Kroger store here, New Bahalia and Poplar. And uh, there was already a huge, a big number of law enforcement uh, here. Carrieville police officers, uh, Carrieville fire department EMTs were here. And just as I was walking up to this area in the back of the store, two people were being helped from the store by Carrieville police officers. Both were bleeding. Um, I could not tell the extent of their injuries. One woman appeared to be hurt worse than the other. I couldn't tell if they were gunshot victims or, or if, if something else may have happened at the time. I later learned that they were probably gunshot victims. Um, moving around the back of the store, uh, it was there was a, a lot more activity. Collierville police officers were all back in this area. As they moved around the edge of the store, they were helping people out of the pharmacy, out of one of the other doors, trying to escape a lot of the chaos inside. Because at that time, I mean, if you think about it, this was about 140. They didn't know. They'd only gotten the call five minutes earlier. They didn't know if there was still a shooter inside. They had uh, just got here, and they weren't able to fully assess that scene. So they were working, getting people out of this store. So people were getting out through the pharmacy. And just to give you a little perspective, Kevin, if you could show just the, the size of this store, I mean, it starts over here behind the uh, command center truck and goes all the way to the other side. It takes up a full half city block. So as people were being ushered out of the main entrance of the store, there were people on the other side of the store down here in the pharmacy that had no idea what was going on. So they were being uh, rushed out through the side entrances. As I came around to the front, I immediately saw tons and tons of blue lights and red lights, uh, police officers and medical personnel coming into this parking lot and SWAT team members were gearing up. Some of them were already geared up and they ran immediately in both entrances to this store. There's the main entrance right behind that, uh, that awning, if you will, that glass facade. The other entrance is just a few yards to the left of that. And they were pouring into both entrances, uh, trying to get in and secure this area to figure out again if there was indeed uh, a shooter still alive and still uh, doing his dirty work, if you will, inside this store. I'm told by one law enforcement agent who was inside the store at the time that uh, it was it was pretty pandemonious. There were a lot of people uh, still uh, scrambling to get out of the way, all while there were shopping carts left in place, personal belongings left on the floor, and uh, just a little snapshot frozen in time. People on the floor who were hurt, hurt badly. Uh, as you clarified, Merle, 13 people were hit by this shooter. One of them died. Uh, 12 others were taken to several of the uh, other medical centers around Baptist. Uh, Collierville is just a mile and a half up the road. I'm told a couple of the minor injuries were taken there. Others were taken to Regional 1. Of course, that's a level one trauma center. Uh, they're experts at dealing with gunshot wounds, and they really had their hands full. Uh, just about 15 minutes after that, you could see Medwing come in. Uh, helicopters circle this area for quite some time. and. Uh, they eventually landed. I'm not sure if they transported uh, someone or not. Now, look, as far as new information, we do know, as we told you off the top of 5 o'clock, that police are looking at a black SUV in this parking lot, just uh, about 100 yards this direction. As a matter of fact, Fox 13's Dominique Dillon is live in that area right now with more on what's going there. So here is the Toyota RAV4, dark colored Toyota RAV4. We've been told this is the vehicle the shooter was in. As you can see, there is a man in a bomb suit approaching the vehicle, opening up the trunk. Let's see, and he has something in his hand. It looks like a cord, but it's pretty difficult to see from here. He's opening the trunk very slowly. And they have, first they had a robot, go, inspect the vehicle before they brought this individual in to get closer to the vehicle. He's currently looking in the back of the trunk, searching around, and it's pretty difficult to see from here, but 
Now he looks like he's extending a cord into the back. A little earlier, I saw him take a black device out. It was the size of a laptop. So it looked like it was a laptop, but it's unclear exactly what that device was. And he took it over to um, a station they have on the side. But as you can see, this individual is in the bomb suit and in the back of the Toyota RAV4 searching for evidence, investigating, trying to gather anything that they can. But this does look like a Toyota RAV4 dark color. We've been told this is the vehicle that the shooter was driving. It's parked on the left side of the Kroger near the stop sign. And just about every door is open. The Both rear passenger doors are open. Um, and then the trunk is open as well. And you can see one individual in the back gathering evidence this is this area is blocked off you can see several um law enforcement agents out here making sure they can preserve the crime scene now you can see that the person in the bomb suit is backing away from the vehicle and it's difficult to see him from where our camera is right now but he's walking over to the right and there's looks like a basket over here. Now you can see that they're pushing us back further. It's unclear why they're pushing us back, but they're pushing us back to the sidewalk. All right, and now they're just waiting. Individual in the bomb suit is just waiting on the side. He's a distance from the vehicle at this point in time. But they have pushed us back from the perimeter. So at this point in time, we're just waiting, watching, looking to see what happens, understand what the individual was doing, what the law enforcement agent was doing. But for our safety, they have pushed us back. And then I'm going to toss this back to you in the off, I mean, um, at the station, going to pass this back to you in the station as they continue to push us back. Dominique, um, you saw it as it was happening, as law enforcement was looking out for the safety of people around what we believe was the shooter's uh, car there in Collierville, just to the east of the front of the Kroger there in Collierville, as we wait for a live news conference to happen. We're going to go back to uh, Daryl Green, who is there on the scene, along with Tom Dees and Dominique Dillon. Daryl? Yeah, Merle, uh, we're waiting. We're just uh, we're supposed to be 30 seconds away from news conference. As a matter of fact, here comes uh, Carrieville's uh, public information officer, probably going to give us a, a few seconds warning before Chief Dale Lane comes up. We expect to hear from the chief uh, an update on uh, the last three hours of their investigation. Of course, we heard at 310. Actually, they're going to they're going to pull us over here. So I, I think can we can we walk and talk, Kevin? Is that OK? OK, yeah, we're going to we're going to walk and talk here. Forgive us for the live television, but again, Chief Dale Lane, oh, I'm sorry, Chief Dale Lane is going to uh, give us an update on how far they've come in the investigation here in just the, the last three hours. We heard from them right after three o'clock, uh, the latest information. That's where they confirmed that uh, the shooter was dead, a male. And I will tell you this, we are working right now behind the scenes with uh, some of our law enforcement sources and other sources in the community uh, to find out who this shooter is. We may uh, get that information from Chief Dale Lane uh, here in this news conference. Uh, we're still working to confirm a lot of information over who this individual uh, might actually be. So we're going to wait on uh, Chief Lane to come up and confirm all of that. You know, just really quick while we've got a moment, I want to again show you the enormity uh, of this area. Again, this is a huge store. We've got uh, Drone 13 video that we shot earlier. We sent the drone up about 4.30 or 5 o'clock to give you a perspective of uh, just how big of a crime scene this is. Again, investigators have combed this entire parking lot and parking lots uh, nearby as well to make sure that they're uh, covering every angle to uh, find the uh, find every piece of information they can about this shooter and what happened. So here comes Collierville Police Chief Dale Lane. He's going to step up to the microphone and give us the latest update. I'm going to clip our microphone here and just turn it over to the chief.
right. Uh, I want to start out with uh, just some housekeeping uh, things real quickly. Um, as this uh, investigation, is, investigation has progressed, uh, we're trying to coordinate our information flow. So all the information will be coming through the Carville Police Department. Um, our mayor, our board of aldermen, uh, I'll be speaking on their behalf. Uh, we don't want to confuse and I definitely don't want to create any additional fear in the community. Right now there are no known additional threats to the community. Right now we're working a crime scene, a very significant one. Several, you know, tens of thousands of square feet crime scene. I'm very thankful today there was uh, a lot of good things that came that I really believe prevented uh, this tragedy from being much worse. And I don't want to take away from what's occurred. Um, my thoughts and prayers, and I hope yours are too, are going to be with the victims, everybody that's impacted. A lot of people were impacted by this. So uh, I'm thankful. As you can see, there's uh, many partners that are, they come to help us today, and I'm so thankful for them. Pretty much every city in this county, we've got the Memphis Police Department, Shelby County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, TBI, ATF, you name it, they came. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Uh, something else, I was talking to our team, one of the things that I saw as I entered that building today, um, the training that's going on in this community and across this country uh, for years saved people's lives today. How many of you have heard of Run, Hide, Fight? That's exactly what those people today did. Uh, we had 44 employees that were inside at the time this started, and uh, we've accounted for, for everyone. Now, we still have the same number of victims as we did at the previous one, with the addition of one. We had one walk in to one of our local hospitals, and it wasn't a shooting victim. It was uh, an anxiety attack. So this is going to... this this situation is going to drive fear, but we are a resilient community, and you know we're going to do everything we can uh, to make sure that we keep Carryville in this area as safe as we can, and uh, I, right now I'm going to ask a special agent in charge of the local FBI, Doug Kornesky, if he would come and just give some brief comments. We also have Teresa Dickerson from Kroger, the public information officer, who's going to provide some information, and then we'll open it up for some quick questions. So, Doug, if you will. Thank you, Chief Lane. So, sir, could you say and spell your first last name? Before sure. You Sorry. It's, it's uh, Douglas Korneski, uh, K-O-R-N-E-S-K-I. So, uh, first, I just want to start by uh, expressing our condolences and, again, our, our prayers with the community. Many of us live in this community, shop in this store, um, so we uh, d deeply feel the uh, the loss and, and uh, emotions here today. I want to mention that the, the reason we're here, we're here supporting uh, Coleyville PD. Uh, I want to give kudos, absolute kudos, to the response of the police department, Shelby County Sheriff, the fire department. Uh, their rapid response here today was, was definitely commendable. Uh, under the uh, authorities of the Investigative uh, Assistance for Violent Crimes Act of 2012, the FBI is allowed to provide at the request of local law enforcement uh, investigative assistance. So what we're doing here today, we've deployed our evidence response team, uh, which has a lot of experience in processing these scenes. Um, they're here, they're inside the, uh, the store, they're processing uh, the evidence. Uh, additionally, we have our uh, victim specialists who uh, have come and uh, will be providing and have been providing assistance to the victims of the crime and then uh, we'll be assisting with other investigative uh, interviews and, and things of that nature. So um, it's a great team effort, uh, just always um, in the site of tragedy. It's good to see the, uh, you know, the Memphis, and Collierville, uh, West Tennessee uh, law enforcement uh, communities pull together, as we always do, uh, when tragedy strikes. Teresa Dickerson, and I'm the Corporate Affairs Manager for Kroger Delta Division. I'd like to just say every Kroger associate here in this city, in the Mid-South, we stand with our team here at the Fireville store. Actually, every associate throughout the country, we are praying for our associates here in Fireville, and we're asking the community to please pray for us as we go through this difficult time. We're saddened and heartbroken by what happened here today. It is an emotional roller coaster as you can imagine. 
and we of course have provided counseling for every associate who's here today and we will continue to do that we will also close the store it will remain closed until further notice again this is a tragic incident and we are saddened by it please pray for our family our Carter family the family of the victim and we are asking today that you will for the integrity of this investigation please direct all questions to the Cairo Police Department and we just want to say thank you to the police department to the first responders who were rushing in as people were rushing out if you can imagine that then you also pray for our first responders who came out today to help us during this tragic incident. Thank you. Them. Very little. Right now he is uh, he's deceased. Um, we're still continuing the investigation. It's ongoing. There's uh, search warrants that are going to be carried out uh, shortly uh, at different locations or at one in particular. Can't give that out, so I know that's the next question. Um, but we're going to carry this thing as far as we can to see and make sure that there's no one else involved. Chief, did you talk about the, the, the truck in front of this two hundred bomb unit that has been here? Yeah. That's pretty standard in these types of situations. We want to check and make sure. You know, we know from our past uh, experience, or I, I, I say past experience, my past knowledge of these incidents around the country. There have been times where there have been booby traps and things like that that's been associated with these. So it's out of abundance of caution. Uh, we have the resources here. We have some of the finest specialized resources in this part of the country, and they've been here for a long time. Uh, preparing for terrorist type attacks. Uh, this, in this case, it's, uh, it, we don't believe that's involved here, uh, but it's early in the investigation and we're continuing on. But it's it's uh, just making sure that any contact uh, that we keep this community safe. Chief, what, what, what about this train? Uh, I don't have that information right now. We'll try to get that for you uh, tomorrow. How much changes? Do you know their conditions? Right now, it's still the same. I know that we had one in surgery and uh, another in ICU. And uh, so, y'all continue to pray. We don't want there to be any more loss of life. Are they all gunshots? Because there's a chance that someone might have tripped. Are they all gunshots? I don't have any information to support that. Chief, what about what about the training that you all have dealt with and active? shooting investigated without getting weight, specific tactics, but what helped your officer today uh, potentially have something worse happen? It, it, it hasn't been uh, three months. The Carville Police Department hosted a multi-agency active shooter training scenario with our law enforcement partners, fire, um, and I'm very thankful that we did. Um, it's a whole lot easier to go through. Um, you make your mistakes there. Uh, today, what, what the result was, was victims were able to get medical treatment much faster because of the integration between police and fire. And our partners come in. Everyone knew. Uh, very proud of our police officers. Uh, I think, and thank you for saying that, Teresa. You know, it's, it's one thing to see it on the news, but it's another thing when you're having to, to go in and know that there's a potential person uh, armed on that other side and, and there was not one person. It didn't. That, that building was flooded with blue uniforms, and I'm very thankful for you. That's part of the investigation. We're not going to get into that. It's part of the investigation. So, are you talking about the shooter? No, the person. I do not know. I don't have that. I don't have that information. We'll try to get that for you before tomorrow. Are any officers? 44. We don't have that information at this time. What we've done is we deployed multiple teams, uh, not only searching the inside of the facility, but all the surrounding areas uh, to make sure that uh, we didn't have anybody that was injured that ran out. So we feel very confident that we've, we've everybody that was involved, that we have a good handle on that now. Chief, what are you looking for inside the store tonight, and how long will this remain? Well, as long as it takes to get it done right, you know, that's the thing. We don't want to take a shortcut, uh, so we're going to take our time. We've got very good partners that are here with us, and we're going to go through and make sure that we got the I's and cross the T's, so I, I can't give you that. We know, we know a bomb smoke was working in a car. Is that one was discovered or not discovered? 
Nothing's been discovered at this point. Ma'am, can't say, I can't comment on that right now. Can you say if the shooting happened so early this morning? No, there, as far as we know, there wasn't any other incident that led up to this at this at this point. Were any officers hurt? No officers were hurt. Chief Lane, what's next for the emotional toll that's taken on your officers? It's not every day a police department deals with an active shooting. How's your department doing? What's next for, for you all after this after? Right now, our, our, our primary concern with scene stabilization and making sure that we get the victims the, the medical help. But there will be a time when we'll do critical stress debriefings with our officers. Uh, there'll be officers that involved in similar situations come from across the state that we'll, we'll talk about it. And uh, we'll, what did we do right? Is there things that we can do better and those kinds of things? I don't know if you noticed, but we had chaplains here. Uh, we graduated nine chaplains um, two weeks ago. Um, and they were, we had uh, three chaplains on the scene here offering their services. I'm very thankful um, that they were here. Can you show what type of weapon was used? I know nope. Can you say how many? I don't know. That's part of the investigation. So, what we don't want to do is, I, I know you want that information and we want to give it to you. We're not, uh, what we have to make sure is that there's no one else involved in this. And, and the more information we release, the more we compromise potential investigation going forward. So, we're going to get you the information eventually, but right now, uh, please bear with me. I'm not sure. Do you want to answer that question? Did, did the program have security at the time? Um, so we'll give you that information okay. um, as soon as it's available. I'll, I'll get with them and he can uh, provide another update. Chief, was there a time that you thought there was a second shooter? There, we, we have to go into it anticipating that that's the potential for it. Um, but there was no credible evidence that there was a second shooter. Most of our uh, first-hand witnesses pointed to one. Um, I know there were some reports that I think we talked about in the first briefing where there was an individual on the roof. I can personally tell you that was a Kroger employee because I was part of getting him off. So uh, that was definitely a Kroger employee. Chief, I know you've had this has been asked, but I'm getting a lot of questions on the other side. Detective, have you thought someone was removed from this and had updates about what's happening? It's not clear yet? Well, we're not going to release what's what's been removed from that vehicle, okay? If there's something, I wasn't aware of that. Um, I'm sure there's somebody that's got eyes on it. I'm, you know, I'm kind of staying back and we're trying to let let our professionals do their job, so, um, but two more questions. Can you go through the timeline of events one more time, please? Okay, uh, we told you at the at the last briefing that the first call came out at 1.30. Um, the first car that the dispatch has on the scene is four minutes later. I have since found out that as that call was going out, Harville PD did have a car that was on the scene, so our response was almost immediate. Some people don't get on the radio. You know, it's a high-stress situation, and they've been trained. You go towards the threat, and that's what they were doing. Any children in the region? Not that I've been told at this point. Will there be another briefing tonight? Uh, probably not tonight. If we get uh, any significant developments through the ongoing investigation, uh, Major David Townsend will reach out to you guys, and we'll we'll uh, organize a press conference. If not, we'll have one sometime early in the morning to brief everybody up. Okay. Anything else? All right. All right. Thank you. I, I, we're still hot, guys. I, yeah, I, I think we're still on. Morgan, are we still on here? Okay, very good. You just heard from uh, Chief Dale Lane, the update. Um, not a ton of new information coming out other than the fact that there were 44 Kroger employees in the store at this time, or at the time of the shooting today. Um, the status of the uh, individuals who were hurt is still relatively the same. Uh, Chief Lane described one who was in surgery just minutes ago. Uh, there was another who was listed in intensive care. Uh, the others are in varying stages of care of the 13 victims here at the store. Again, still one, only one deceased, only one victim dead. The shooter dead, as we've reported all afternoon. He also said that there was another person who uh, took themselves to Baptist Collierville with an anxiety attack. So not necessarily a victim, but probably someone who was here and experienced that trauma. Um, they're still looking at that car. And I think we still have that shot up of the car near the store that officers are still looking at. If we can take that shot, 
Um, we're told uh, just through media reports here a moment ago that officers removed something from that vehicle. You saw uh, Dominique Dillon describing to you just a, a little bit ago uh, the officer, the investigator who was in the bomb-proof suit and uh, working to uh, take a look at that car, see if there were any explosives inside. We do not know what he removed, but again, uh, that's the most active part of this scene. The rest of this has turned into police. Okay, you see that box on the ground near the car? That is what police are looking at specifically. We have no idea the contents of that. And Chief Dale Lane actually um, uh, talked about the fact that that's protocol, that they've seen this in other areas where uh, vehicles that are used by shooters are indeed booby traps. So this is all standard procedure. That box could be nothing or it could indeed be something. But again, this uh, has turned into basically command central. Um, Teresa Dickerson from Kroger is here. You've heard from her. They're now funneling all of their information and media requests through the Collierville Police Department. So we'll be going to them. Uh, as far as the shooter, again, we're working with various law enforcement officials, uh, some of our sources near law enforcement. Um, we're working on a name and we're working on a face. We don't have anything confirmed yet, and it's uh, irresponsible for us to give any conjecture as far as to who, who this individual might be. So we will not do that until we get something hard solid confirmed from law enforcement. But you heard Chief Lane also allude to the fact that they're investigating a couple of other sites not here at the store. Search warrants were being executed. So that tells you they do in need, they do indeed know exactly who this shooter is. Tomorrow we're going to get more information throughout the evening from the Collierville Police Department. And of course, we'll be here all night till Fox 13 News at 9 and 10. All right. Thank you very much, Daryl. Uh, we've been, while Daryl was updating you there on the scene, we have been gathering other information information back here at Fox 13 Studios. Uh, this is very important for families around there and the rest of us in this area. Chief Del Lane wanted to remind everyone right now, no additional threats to the community. That is very important. No additional threats to the community uh, coming out of, uh, from Chief Del Lane, Collierville Police, uh, coming out of that horrific scene today, the mass shooting. Also, we have a statement from the Collierville School Superintendent who has a big job ahead of, of him and his teachers and administrators uh, with their students. And this is what Gary Lilly said. Our thoughts go out to all who are affected by the tragedy that occurred this afternoon at Kroger. Thanks to Collierville PD for constant contact during the event. Counselors are available and ready to support students, staff, and families. And he ends with the hashtag prayers for Collierville, which you will probably see trending locally over the next bit of time. Uh, and as we wrap up Fox 13 News at 6, we just want to remind you, we will continue looking into uh, other leads on this story as we try to bring you more information. We do have information about who investigators believe the shooter was. We are not releasing that information at this time. We have been asked not to do anything that will jeopardize the investigation. However, we know law enforcement have arrived at a house that is associated with the possible suspect. Stay informed, stay tuned. If we are not on the air, we are online at fox13memphis.com. I'm Merle Purvis. On behalf of all of us at Fox 13 News, thank you for being with us. We'll see you back here tonight on Fox 13 News at 9 and 10. We now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. Deborah Messing just cannot understand how a reality star like Kim